One of TF2's oldest maps just received an update. Steel, which was released back in 2008 as part of the Heavy update, has undergone some major changes. In the past, it got a couple of bug fixes, which is pretty normal. We've seen Valve do the same thing in other maps, but this time, they went as far as changing the layout, adding new doors, and remodeling entire portions of the map. I honestly can't remember the last time that Valve did something like this, let alone to a map this old. Now, don't get me wrong, the 2023 summer update is full of new mapping content, some of which has struck the hearts of many. But in my opinion, a change to a map like Steel far outreaches any seasonal content. Many of us have spent years to just over a decade playing this map, familiarizing ourselves with all of the different tips and tricks, and with the changes in its layout come changes in its strategy. And there are always people who oppose major map changes for one reason or another, and their thoughts aren't to be ignored. So in this video, I'd like to go over some of Steel's updates, discussing how it affects gameplay, whether I think these changes are good, and if Valve should be updating other maps in the same fashion. Hey, this is LED after recording the video with a quick word. When I recorded this video, I thought that Valve themselves were the ones responsible for these changes. I knew that Steel was a community-created map, but I was under the impression that Valve assumed the rights to it. After a brief exchange with the original creator of the map, Fishbus, I know now that I am wrong, and that he is the one responsible for all of the changes we see in the current version. In fact, he actually made even more changes to the map that we don't see right now because Valve put out a slightly older version. As of right now, I don't know if we'll see another update to the map, but just know that throughout the video, when I refer to the changes being made by Valve, I'm actually referring to Fishbus. I'm sorry for the confusion, I hope you enjoy the video. Starting in blue spawn, these two blue pillars have been removed, which allows for easier access leaving spawn. Now this is a change that I like, because it doesn't affect core gameplay, and it makes the spawn room feel less cluttered. Valve did the same thing with Red's first and second spawn rooms. They widened the spawning spaces and rearranged some of the furniture, which again makes the space feel fuller. Now I think these changes are great. Spawn rooms are easy to overlook since they're not involved in head-to-head -head combat but their structure and looks are important since you see them at the start of every life. However, Red's second spawn room is now more than just a little wider. The door that exits out to point D has been moved further down and is now accompanied by a window. I also like this change because it opens up the area by directing players further to the left and gives them more vision, leaving them less susceptible to blind sticky traps and explosive damage, which was very easy to inflict in the previous iteration. They also replaced these wooden boards with ramps, which I also see as a plus because before it was possible for explosions to get trapped in these corners dealing no damage. And running to and from the point is now a little smoother. None of this jittery stuff. Okay, let's rewind back to blue spawn. If we exit towards A and take the staircase route, we see that the brick wall has been pushed back significantly, widening the area and allowing for more versatility when shooting enemies out of these windows. This will ultimately help Blue leave their spawn, which I like because there have been cases where I was playing on Blue and had a really hard time finding myself out of this area. Now one quick thing about these windows that you probably won't see anybody else mention are these sloped clip rushes that sit above them. I actually included these in the thumbnail for one of my videos about pixel walking, and essentially you used to be able to stand on top of these. Now part of me is upset that this was fixed because I loved using this spot to throw off enemies and confuse my teammates. But in all seriousness, it's good that it's been fixed because you definitely weren't meant to go up there and it was a pretty powerful spot. However, as a semi-pyro main, I am upset that they removed the clipping and trigger push entities off of these conveyor belts because now you can't do these epic flog cancels as pyro, which I also included in one of my videos. Sometimes I wonder if Valve watches them. Now perhaps the most noteworthy changes of the map are around point A, with the biggest change being that Valve added a second barrel here. But that's worthy of its own video, so I'm gonna jump straight to the other things. For one, the roof has been raised, and this sloped clip rush from before has been replaced by a vertical one, so you can't really shoot over it or do fancy sliding or ramp sticking anymore. What a shame. But more notably, we see this new one-way door, which is intended to prevent blue players from shooting red players leaving their spawn. This is kind of a big deal, because everything I've described up until this point has really been about improving the spawn rooms. And while this door is located in close proximity to a spawn room, it really changes the gameplay. Red is now guaranteed control of this area, and can peek towards this upper area relatively safely. This is a change that I'm not sure if I like. I guess I'll have to play the map a bit before I can really say, but nonetheless, it's pretty bold of Valve to make a change like this. 
The one thing I do like about this door is that you can use it to launch yourself up in the air by slowly creeping out. The next change surrounding this point is the giant blast door to E. Not only can you no longer shoot through it with the flamethrower, you can't shoot through the edges either, and Valve just completely blocked off this area with the second door, which kind of nullifies fixing the blast door to begin with. Ultimately, this is good news for players who I'd often see get lost back there, and it should prevent that 1 in a million chance of a stray rocket or flame particle going through the blast door when it could have killed an enemy instead. Alright, so going back to blue spawn and heading over to B, we see another major change, which you could argue is a bigger deal than that new door over at A, because blue players can now exit this area off to the side, making it more difficult for red players to spawn trap. Though I don't like that they left this area up here untouched, because it looks a little funky. I mean, if you look very closely, there's some bricks on the ceiling, and these two blocks don't even touch the back wall. And there's a black line on this building over here, and some premature prop fading around the place which I'd be more than happy to fix for you if you'd hire me. Not to mention all of these cracks on Dust Bowl. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Take a look at this spot. It's been widened. And not only does this area look better, it should also play better because now it's not as congested. Again, this is a change that I like. Moving towards E, if we take a look at the room adjacent to Red's first spawn, it's been completely changed. Previously, there were four levels that held a lot more alcohol and gave an incredible view to the rockets below. Now, there are only three, with hardly any alcohol available. And you can't even see the rockets. So, does it look better? No, but it may improve the flow of gameplay. As a demo main though, I cannot approve of this change. I guess I'll have to find another way to get my fix. Heading over to C, there aren't any changes that I can see, but in the hallway from Red Spawn leading up to the point, Valve added a bunch of clipping around this door, so you can't stand on top of it anymore. And they added a clip brush up here, so you can no longer place sentries there either. This is a small change that again I'm sure most of you wouldn't pick up on, but it's there and it's nice to see that Valve is paying attention to the little things. However, one thing that I don't think Valve should have changed is the metal grate in this hallway. This may sound harsh, but this texture is disgusting. In the old version, the scale was smaller, and the grey metal color blended nicely with the metal framing. And they didn't just change this vent, they changed the one above and below too, but this time they kept the same texture and just increased the scale. Now they did add a clip brush here to prevent demos and soldiers from dealing explosive damage through the grate, which I personally am not a fan of since it kinda made sense for them to be able to do that in the first place, so maybe in the process of quote unquote fixing that, they thought it'd be a good idea to swap out the textures as well. Please Valve, you don't have to remove the clip brush, but please change the texture back. And that's the gist of it. Now there are some other changes that have been made throughout the map that I didn't go over mainly because they're small, and going over each one in this video would stretch things out too much, so just keep that in mind. Just like I said at the start of this video, I think these changes to steel are a pretty big deal and warrant the discussion of how or if Valve should be updating old maps like this, so please comment down below your thoughts on these changes and whether you'd like to see Valve do this to other old maps like Dust Bowl and Badwater. Thank you for watching, this is LED switching off.